Hello and welcome back to our FCS Dynasty in NCAA Football 2006. This is our final game of week 13 here today. We got the number 8 ranked Dayton Flyers, 9-1 on the season, hosting Big Ten foe Southern Illinois. They're 2-7 on the year. We get this shared in the Discord and we'll be good to go, folks. Let's get it. I'm ready. There it is. We're shared. If you're not in the Discord, please go ahead and join us. Got to get in there to get yourself a player in Season 4 of the FCS Dynasty. Slap the like button on the video as well. Subscribe if you're new. And yeah, let's get it, guys. Number 4 offense in the country for Dayton. Number 10 defense in the land. Southern Illinois, they have struggled all season long. Their highest ranking in anything is their rush defense, which at 67th. Come on. Come on now. You got to play a little bit of defense. I mean, just, just a smidgen, right? Let's take a look and see who Dayton lost to this season. They lost to Western Illinois, the Leathernecks, who are actually having a really good season. The 7-4, they are bull bound. And after that, you can see the Flyers were a little angry. They took it to Illinois State, 84-6 to right after that. And then another close matchup here, almost losing to Northern Iowa. So a couple of these conference opponents giving them a fit here late in the season. But as you can see, they were just destroying everybody except for South Dakota State there in Week 2. But they put up 95 against Buffalo, who's the fifth best team in the country. The Dayton Flyers are the only team to beat them this year. Then they beat Montana, beat Eastern Illinois 71-2. to I mean, they had been destroying everybody until Western Illinois came to town and beat them in their own stadium. Uh, two games left for Dayton. They host Southern Illinois, and then they host the... Elon Phoenix, both teams struggling this season, uh, to say the least. But let's get it, folks. I'm ready. I hope you are as well. You can get my my chat up here on my phone so I can see all you beautiful people. We got Ray Senga in the chat, Tyler Rocky, Ron Kemp, Marvin Joseph, Little Mike, Bill Stevens. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having a fantastic Friday night. And I need to make sure I have the right playbook because, well, I, I forget things. It's been a while since I've used Dayton. Run and gun. That's what we're doing. All right. And, of course, stick around after the ball game is finished. We will take a look at... The new top 25, the next, you know, the top five Heisman watch list, all that fun stuff after the game is over. Jay Washington in the house, Parker Thomas as well. What's up, everybody? All right. And I did post the top 25 for week 13. Completely forgot all the, uh, the terrible things happening with the computer of mine. I was able to finally put the top 25 in there. In the Discord, of course. If you're not in there, please join us. I'll love you forever. All right, Flyers get the ball first. Gloves Malone, Amari Emanuel back to return it. Emmanuel will take it out of the end zone and up to the 17-yard line, and the offense will take the field. And there it is. Dorian Wara makes his return from injury. He's a starter. Jared Martin and Noah Johns back him up. Running backs are Sonny Six, Smash Jackson, and Jared Brody. Receiving core are Mario Emmanuel, Ron Kemp, and Matt Wheaton. Tight ends are Trent Green and James Skaggs. Man, is it good to see... Oh my goodness gracious, Jared Brody! Oh my goodness! Woo! All the way inside the 35-yard line. 50-yard run to start us off. Let's go, freshman! Wow! Before I was so rudely interrupted by his greatness, I was trying to say it's great to see Dorian Wura back on the football field because this offense was looking a little iffy without him. Alright, back to it. 
Smash Jackson. Trying to stay patient. Picks up five yards. A lot of these freshman running backs balling out this season. Harris Gurley, of course, top three in the Heisman race right now. Jared Brody, he's been fantastic. Ryan Tobin for the Bryant Bulldogs has been a beast as well. Here's Brody again in the secondary down to the 11-yard line. My goodness. Unreal. They would be like, are you serious? Another Illinois team? Right? There's so many of them. We're uh, on the option, and that is an easy touchdown in his first game back from injury. There's a man stuck in the field goal post. Pray for him. And before I forget. Little F-16 flyby after the touchdown. Took a minute and two seconds to get in the end zone. Man, oh man. Might be a long night for the Salukis of Southern Illinois. I'm just going to throw that out there. So now they got to go up against, uh, in my opinion, one of the top three or four defenses in the land. This kickoff's out of bounds, so they at least have good field position to start off the game. Sounded like a jet. It was a jet, sir. That was an F-16. All right, we'll go over the defense in a moment. Oh, my goodness. That was almost picked off. First play of the game. Wow. Or first play of defense, rather. Cash Harris at DN. Tank Taylor at deep tackle. Dirt Davis, D.B. Slocum, and Rob Orlandi. That's the starting linebacking core. Joey Garrett is the backup middle linebacker. And we'll go over the rest of the defense in a moment. Foster with a nice stop. The rest of the defense. In the secondary, Gloves Malone, John Fowler, and Logan Bohoric. Those are two true freshman corners. Jermaine Price is the fourth corner on the roster. And at free safety, sophomore Ballhawk, number 21. What's with, me, what's with me and kicking out of bounds? Listen, it's it's my thing that I do on the channel. Don't hate, all right? It's only the third time this whole week, okay? I was doing good until today. Dirt Davis with the fumble recovery. See, what it is on the kickoffs when I do it out of bounds is my phone is right next to me, so I'm looking at the chat when I'm talking to you guys and... And I, I really should pay more attention on kickoffs. Ron Kemp with a screen. Get that block. Oh, he couldn't get it. Inside the 30-yard line, though. True freshman Ron Kemp with a nice catch and run. Played a frat softball tourney in Carbondale back in 87 or 88. Nice. I like it, Bill. I like it a lot. Throw it up. Nice catch for Trent Green. Makes a sliding reception. All right, second down and four to go. Yeah, we're just going to take off. Why not? Get the first down with Wurr inside the 15. No sense in trying to force a pass. Well, who's in the zone? Trent Green is in the zone at tight end. Try to get him the football. 92% in the red zone. Pretty good. Pretty darn good. And there's Trent Green. Nice catch again. Picks up five or six yards. Second down and three from the seven-yard line. Yeah. 
Flyers threatening again. And there's Trent Green, and Trent Green is in for the touchdown for the Flyers. That was too easy. I feel bad for that safety. Oof. So Dorian Ward with a touchdown run, and now a touchdown pass in the first quarter of his return. It's three minutes there. It's two touchdowns on the board. Blow up by the end of one. <laughs> I don't know. Might see some fight here from the Salukis. They just got holding on to the football, really. All right, I'm not looking at the chat. We're good. See, look at that. Perfect kick. Joey Garrett with a nice tackle on a blanket ship. Fullback dive. Jenkins will pick up three yards. And creating superstars on WWE 2K19. You got 45 of them. Nice. Sounds time consuming. I love it. Option. And that's going to go nowhere. Herring, maybe a yard. We were watching a high school game that was 54 to 14 at halftime. Oh my goodness. That's a bit rough. They're going to toss it out. This is going nowhere. Oh, no, it's a face mask. Come on now. Is that Tank Taylor? Yep, sure was. Tank Taylor instead of 4th and 13, it's 3rd and short. Come on now. That's unfortunate. Officially went from 290 pounds in January to now 250. Nice, Mike. I like it. Get him. They went with the toss play again. Wow. Unreal. Tank Taylor makes up for it. Gets the stop for the Flyer defense. Yeah, at the end of April, I was 180 pounds. And then in two weeks, I lost 35 pounds. It was a bit rough. Gloves Malone back to return it. From his own 32-yard line. Oh, I should have fair caught it. I didn't think that guy was that fast. My goodness. What are we doing here? Let's see. Okay. Okay. All right. Looks good. Awesome. Zero people got open. That's what feels bad. Still got four yards out of it. That's that's why I like Dorian Ware. He can escape, get you a handful of yards no matter what. Oh my goodness. Picks coming through unblocked. How do you let the left end just come through like that? Come on now. Crowd not happy with that play. And I can't really say I blame him. Number nine team in the land on third downs. 52%. Not too shabby. And Jared Brody's going to go off tackle. Oh, the freshman can't get it. Tried to catch him off guard. Brody closing in on 1,000 yards rushing in his freshman campaign.
Remember Jackson will get the highest score in FCS history? Yes, sir. Had to take out their frustration on somebody. I think that was a pretty decent kick. I'm not going to have any coverage, though. Come on, Ron. Get over there, buddy. Nice tackle. Let's go, freshman. Freshman receiver out here making plays. It's not Georgia Tech over Cumberland, but we'll take it. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever see a score that high in this. Ever. I'm actually surprised that we've had a couple games over 100 points. Get him. Oh my goodness, how do you not pick that, bro? Come on. Unbelievable. 22 seconds left in the first. And they're going to try to set up. Uh, oh my goodness, that's a pick for Foster. Let's go. Take away for the Flyer defense. 30 for 30 presents 126. I like it. Start that right now, Jay. Regear Productions in the chat. What's up, Noah? How are you, buddy? I basically threw that right to him. That's what feels bad. Smash Jackson, and he's going to run a couple guys over. Picks up five yards, and that will be the end of the first quarter, guys. Number eight, Dayton Flyers on top, 14 to nothing here in Dayton, Ohio, against their Big Ten opponent, Southern Illinois. Enjoying some nice or some good FCS content, yes, sir. Don't forget after the stream, guys. Well, after the game, during the stream, we'll be taking a look at the week 14 top 25, the Heisman watch list, all of that fun stuff. Get you it out, Smash Jackson. Oh, easy, easy money. Touchdown, Flyers. Supervisor of the documentary, you'll give all the work to Hammer. I like it. <laughs> Extra point up and good. It's 21 nothing in the second. If Southern Illinois can actually just hold on to the football, they'd be doing a little better. Two turnovers is definitely not helped them at all. Blankenship on the return. Oh, he is level. Oh my goodness. going nowhere you're done Shannon Ward with the sack loss of five yards this defense is just filthy nice hit where's he going nowhere leveled again Third down and 16. Number 10 defense in the country. 291 yards allowed per game. He's going to take off. Oh my goodness. Or Landy with a stop. Speaking of Hammer, though, Jay, uh, you need to get with him and think of some really good questions for the bowl season for our teams. Rack your brain, buddy. Rack it. I'd love to have some some pretty good questions for for the bowl games for everybody. Malone cannot get past the first guy. 
He's got six punt return touchdowns on the season. That is insane. Is it weird that you think Dayton is the worst one-loss team in the dynasty? What one-loss team do you think is better than Dayton? Wide open. It's Rowe. Computer player. Love to see it. Who's my top five favorite NFL players? Are you talking like all time or current players? Jacksonville, North Dakota State are better than Dayton. Oh boy. Well, if Dayton doesn't have Dorian Wura, I agree. But I think Dayton with Dorian Wura is a better football team than North Dakota State. I don't think they're better than Jacksonville. So I will give you that one for sure. My top five favorite players all time, Tyler. Let's see. Walter Payton. Steve McNair. Luke Keekley. Steve Smith. And number five. Who, who do I got? Number five. Uh, it's a toss up between Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. I have to say both. <laughs> I gotta have them both in there. See, really, if I, if I wanted to be completely biased, I would just pick all of my favorite Miami Hurricane players that played in the NFL. It's the fact that they have one loss and they might not win the conference again. Yeah, that does definitely hurt them for sure. Brody up the middle, and he's in for the touchdown. Jared Brody just having himself a day. Every time he touches the football, he's in the second level uh, and like his second or third step. Pretty good list, Ray. I like all those players. One of my best friends actually played with Brian Westbrook at Villanova. Oh, what a hit! Sit down! Get him out of here! Get him out of here, coach! They just keep trying this toss play, and that's the same result that they're getting every time. Oh, you actually want me to do a top five Miami Hurricane list for the NFL? Oh, boy. See, even that would be tough because there's just so many good ones. But a top five, let's see. Ray Lewis, Ed Reed. Definitely. Uh, Devin Hester, for sure. Uh, let's see, who else? Uh, Sean Taylor, obviously. Is that four? Did I say four already? Lewis, Reed, Hester, Taylor. And for a running back, I mean, I love Gore. I love Gore. But is he a top five for me? I don't think so. I actually think, um, I like watching Clinton Portis a lot better than I like watching Frank Gore. Like, I love Frank Gore. But Clinton Portis, I mean, he was just on another level when he was at his peak.
I can sit here and talk all day about my favorite hurricanes. All day. But I got this really close game I gotta win for Dayton, so. <laughs> but I'm more than happy to answer any questions you guys have. About anything. I would like to sit down and do a, like a Q&A with everybody. Just have you guys ask me whatever questions you want. I was thinking about doing that for my uh, 1,000 subscriber special. Uh-oh. Okay, Dorian. This is a touchdown. Let's go. Touchdown, Flyers. Top five power backs. Oh, man. Earl Campbell, for sure. I mean, Derrick Henry, he's got to be in there already, right? He's got to be. Uh, Jerome Bettis. Uh, who else? Brandon Jacobs. When he was in his prime, he was just such a beast. So hard to bring down. The guy's like six foot five. Get him. Nine and five? No, it was, I think it was four. I'm trying to try I'm trying to think of somebody like in the the two thousands era. Because going way back, I mean that's too easy. Everybody was a power back pretty much. There's so many power backs in the seventies, eighties, and nineties. The quarterback has yet to complete a pass. Get him out of here. Come on, second and ten. Little play action. Loves Malone with a nice deflection. Quarterback is 0 for 7. Jamal Lewis, thank you. I was <laughs> I was trying so hard to think of him. I was like, who <laughs> was that Ravens running back? I couldn't think of it for the life of me. My brain just went blank. Eddie George? I wouldn't say Eddie George is a power back though. Like he could run people over, but he he could do it all. He was fast, he was strong, he was agile. When I think of power backs, I think of just, you know, guys that can only run, you know, straight ahead and, and just plow through people. All right. From the 27. Jared Brody in at halfback again. Oh, breaking a tackle. Making another man miss. Jared Brody off to the races. Look out. The freshman is gone again. Wow. Goodness gracious. Well, this game's over. 100%. Yeah, Mike, I feel bad for those defenses for sure. Priest Holmes and, and Jamal Lewis? Come on now. How do you go up against that? And the fact that they had a top five defense that entire time too. Like, come on now. All they had to do was keep running it. Oh, that's out of bounds. Wow. Going the other way this time. That one's for you, Jay. Brody versus Curly would be a discussion for next year. Absolutely. I mean, what other freshman running backs are doing what these two are doing? Brody just went over 1,000 yards rushing, and this is a three-back system. Gurley only has to share carries um, a little bit. 
with Matthews, with Cameron Matthews. But the Flyers, they have Smash Jackson. They have Sonny Six, who was on the Heisman watch list last season. And Brody is just making the best of every single carry that he gets. Nice deflection by D.B. Slocum. Let's go. Yeah, Jay, that's a Christmas present for you, buddy. Don't say I never gave you anything. They're down. Ten yards to go. Oh, he caught it! Oh my goodness. The first completion of the game for their quarterback. And the first first down of the game for the Salukis. Baltimore had a quarterback that would have that was just good enough. They would have had a, a dynasty. Yeah, they definitely would have, for sure. Instead they had Tony Banks and Trent Dilfer. Wow, what a hit. Who was that? DB Slocum, oh my goodness. Wow. I feel bad for the quarterback. He's getting just trounced right now. Crowd's still getting into it, even though their team is up by a million. Where are you going? You're not going anywhere, man. Shannon Ward is second sack of the game. Third and 13 coming up. Here's a good question for you guys. Who's your favorite player on a rival team? On a rival team of your favorite NFL team. And incomplete. Fourth down coming up. I would really enjoy blocking another punt with the Flyers. Come on, get this. No, we almost had it. No. <laughs> Come on. Get away from the ball. Yeah, we ran into him too. Logan Bohorek, the man who has the only block in FCS history. Ran into the kicker. Now they're going to go for it. That's fine. Packers fans, you're going to go with Kelvin Johnson. That's a good pick. And another sack. Get him out of here. Sit him down. Ice up, son. Dirt Davis. Coming through on block. Sunny six a carry and get him two yards. Fantastic. Oh boy. Nope. Throw it up top. Nice deflection. First incomplete pass of the game for Dorian Wura. He's only thrown it six times. Haven't really felt the need to throw it with Jared Brody just going off this game. And Brody again escapes. Brody down to the 30-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I don't know if I've ever seen a running back just get to the second level that fast. And we've had some great ones in this series. It just seems like as soon as I hand it off to him, he's already 10 yards downfield. And there goes Brody again. Nice blocking downfield. Brody is gone again. Touchdown, Flyers. Wow. This young man is unbelievable. Yeah. 
49-0. 21 seconds left in the first half. Saluki's just getting taken to the woodshed right now. This is crazy. Like, I know the Flyers are good, but oh my goodness. The ground attack. Yeah, I mean, what are they going to do? They can't stop that. 337 rushing yards in the first half. Sit down. Put the backups in. Get them out. Unbelievable. They're going to go with a counter play. That went nowhere. Dirk Davis, another stop. Loss of five. Sufficiently worse than the game you were watching before. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jay. I can't control how bad the Salukis are playing. All right, end of the half. It's 49 nothing. Number eight, Dayton on top of the Salukis. Might give the starters one more drive on offense. Get Noah John some playing time at quarterback. See what the young fella can do. I just got absolutely destroyed. Matthew Stafford is one of the most underrated NFL quarterbacks ever. I agree. I love Matthew Stafford. I think he's great. Triple coverage. And he catches it. Come on now. <laughs> Unbelievable. B Rob 1990, what's going on, buddy? Ouch, blowout. <laughs> it's it's been a bit rough. The running game from Dayton is just dominating. And the defense, well, I mean, come on now. Defense is disgustingly good. What's underrated? Underrated is like underappreciated. Like nobody gives him the credit that he deserves. Just because his team's bad. They're going to try the option again. Good luck. And they get two yards. Glad to hear you doing good, B Rob. And Rob Orlandi with a pick at the 30 yard line. Let's go. He just broke the all time record for interceptions in her career. That is number 3 0 for the All American middle linebacker. Congratulations to Rob Orlandi. Tag him in the Discord. Add that to his accolades. And Smash Jackson carries a guy. Picks up four yards. 30 interceptions. Unreal. All right, second down and seven. Trent Green in the zone. And Jared Brody again wiggling through the secondary and gets the first down. 30 for 30 presents 30. Oh my goodness. Come on, Jay. <laughs> That's great. I'd like to throw it a few more times with Word just to get him back into the rhythm here. And there we go. Trent Green, first down up to the 35. All 30 of those uh, interceptions with Rob Orlandi were all user interceptions, by the way. Don't know if you guys realize that. I'm just saying. Just flexing a little bit. Smash Jackson, first down. How much am I paying the teams to throw it to him? <laughs> oh, man. 
trust me, it has been pretty difficult to get all those interceptions. I've dropped quite a few of them. Yeah, we're gonna take off here. Why not? Oh my goodness! Dorian, we're a oh, he fumbles it at the one yard line. Good try, though. I love those animations when you dive and get destroyed. And a false start. Fantastic. Gotta have a bad player or two in the game, right? Alright, first and goal from the six yard line. Brody in at halfback for Dayton. And Brody. Brody carries the defense in for another touchdown. Wow. Got the young 50 burger. This is what Dayton's been doing to everybody this season, except for their two close games that they had against Northern Iowa and then that close loss to Western Illinois. And it's 56 to nothing. Get the defensive body bag. Yeah, get him a whole bunch. I think we have about 400 rushing yards on him right now. It's been kind of sad. High kickoff. And nice tackle. 479 yards of offense for Dayton. Just 40 for Southern Illinois. They've had several turnovers, which definitely have not helped them in this ballgame. Crowd's still getting behind their team. They can't hear a thing. Wow, they actually handed that off. Oh, Orlando, not fast enough. First down, Salukis. They are now up to five yards rushing. Get him. Dirt Davis, another tackle for the sophomore. Brings up second and nine. Oh my goodness gracious, Dirt Davis again. Five tackles on the game. And there's a sack as well. And I believe he's got a fumble recovery. Have a pretty good day at the office. Third down, 11. They are one for nine on third down. Unbelievable. Still can't hear anything. Hat, most of their receiving core is is trying to hear whatever the quarterback is saying to them. And ball hockey, he's playing volleyball out here. Herring, 2 of 14, 48 yards and 2 INTs. Just get on the bus, man. All right, gloves, what you got, buddy? Nothing. All right. All right, let's get a new quarterback in here. Get the young sophomore some playing time. And yes, I will be throwing the football with him a little bit. He's a lefty. I got to get good with him. Oh boy. 
Sonny Six with the screen pass. And spins out two defenders for the first down. 20 first downs in the game for the Dayton Flyers. If you guys haven't already, don't forget to slap the like button on the stream. And subscribe if you're new. Get that blow. Oh my goodness, how did he miss? Oh my goodness, Smash Jackson. Wow. I, I don't know how that guy missed that badly. And that poor safety, wow. He needs a hug. Get him some milk. Not sure why Dorian Wurra is in on that formation at quarterback, but okay. Go it up top, and it's picked off. That's fine. Get him, Ron. What are you doing? 99 speed, you're getting outrun? What? Unreal. How is that guy outrunning Ron Kemp with a 99 speed? I mean, look at that. I barely caught up to him. Good lord. Something just doesn't add up, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right, first and 10 from the 40. What can they do? They can get four yards. I still find it funny that Orlandi's not a impact player for this defense. Like, in what world does that make any sense? I don't think he's been, been injured this season. Unless I'm forgetting. Quarterback draw. Ten carries, 19 yards. What a legend. They might hit triple digits for yards in this game. They just might. Green. And Logan goes nowhere. Second and nine from the 17 yard line. 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Oh, he might score. Oh, he's dropped at the one yard line. Good run after the catch by the tight end, Logan. Chaos driven in the chat. What's going on, my brother? You tuned in for probably the closest game of the season right here. Can we get a goal line stand? Probably not. But I'll give it my best. They're going to toss it out. Oh, nice touchdown for the Salukis. They finally get on the board. And they close the gap ever so slightly. And since we're still in the third quarter, they're not going to go for the onside kick after this extra point. So we got that going for us, I guess. Malone and Manuel back to return it. And they're going to go to Manuel yet again. Get that block. Amari Manuel up the right sideline. Amari Manuel is to 
the house. Touchdown, Flyers. Not a flag in sight. That scoring play took one second off the clock. You'll love to see it. All right, 63 to 7. Get your fours up in the chat, folks. Flyers on top. About to play some arc with the wife. What do you mean, bruh? What do you mean? Come on, Joey. Get down there. Make a play, buddy. Nope. Oh, somebody else did. Wow, what a hit. <laughs> Get him out of here. Audrey in the chat. What's going on, Audrey? All right, let me get uh, let me get Joey Garrett here at middle linebacker. Get him some playing time. And we'll get Jared Martin in at quarterback since uh, Noah Johns just likes to throw it to the wrong team apparently. Come on, baby. Snap the ball. Let's go. Counter. Or Landy with a nice stop on his final play of the day. I don't know what Cirque is, Audrey. I don't know what that means. I don't speak Audrey. Sorry. They still have their starters in, so. They're trying to win this game, guys. I gotta stay focused. Oh, nice tackle. All right, third down and eight. Biggest play of the day for the Salukis. Look out. And they're going to hand it off. Okay. You either and you've been married for 12 years. <laughs> That's what feels bad, man. Well, I mean, if you did figure out how to speak Audrey, then you would actually have to have a conversation. And, I mean, that just sounds terrifying. Malone, back to return, and that's a fair catch. All right, see if we can get the young 70 burger. Brody somehow squeezes through again. Oh my goodness, a first down for the Flyers. He's got 259 yards rushing in the game. again. Wow. That young man just went over 300 yards rushing in the game. I can't remember the last running back that we've seen in this series go over 300 yards. Not even sure if any of our running backs have done that this season. And it is 70 to 7. Wow. Brody just going off today. Lukies trying to mount the comeback here. 
Only down by a couple scores. Deep shot. And it's caught by Bennett. First down inside Flyer territory. Herring finally goes over 100 yards passing in the game. 5 for 17, 104 yards. Wow. What a beast. That's Patrick Mahomes' numbers right there. Oh my goodness, Dirk Davis. Get him out of here, coach. I don't know why they keep trying that toss play. They don't have the speed for that whatsoever. Oof. Malone swats it down too easy. This secondary is disgustingly good. All defense really is. Saluki's so one for 11 on third down tonight. That was a long one, third 14. And it's tipped up by Joey Garrett. Freshman middle linebacker making a play. It's fourth down and 14 to go. And they'll punt it away. Oh my goodness. How do we not block that, man? Come on now. Come on, gloves. Come on, gloves. All the way to the 19. I'll take it. 20 yard average on punt returns. That's insane. It's actually ludicrous, is what it is. Let's give it off to a random fullback. I'll probably regret it. He'll probably fumble. Oh my goodness, I could not get off of my lineman right there. Kyle G in the chat. What's going on, Kyle? Welcome, buddy. Flyer domination? Yes, sir. I almost feel bad. Almost. All right, Jared, what do you got? What do you got for me? Throw it up. And that's out of bounds. All right, what do we got? Third and 11. We're just going to hand it off to Brody again. Why not? Why not? Man, has been unstoppable all game long. And this time they do stop him, but he gets five more yards. 323 yards on the ground for the freshman. Five touchdowns on 13 carries. So trying to recreate the butt fumble with the fullback dive? I mean, I couldn't get off the left guard. He just wouldn't move. It feels bad, man. Come on, Ron, get down there, buddy. Yeah, what's up? They haven't had a takeaway in a while, and I'm a little upset about that, to be honest with you. Eat him. Dirt Davis again. 33 tackles on the season. One sack, one pick. I believe his numbers would be a lot higher, but I'm pretty sure he got injured for a few weeks at one point. Right at the beginning of the season, I believe. That went well. They are 1 for 12. Only two combined third down conversions in the game. Oh, you got beat like you stole something. Get a ball, Hawk. Oh, they got a touchdown. Yeah, taunt. Okay. Okay. I still got time to score. I see you.
this man really gonna taunt when he's down by 56? Come on, bro. What are you doing? You hoping for a Dayton Flyers live game? Like a real game? I'm sorry to disappoint. Hopefully you've enjoyed this though. If you would like a player in this series, just join our Discord community. There's a link in the description below. We can get you on the Flyers for season four of our FCS Dynasty. Look at Orlandi with a kick return. Come on, bro. <laughs> wow. Deflection should have been a pick six, but they're terrible. So, yeah, there's that. Oh, what I want to do? Let's go with the halfback guy. So, give it off to Smash Jackson. Jared Brody, player of the game for the Flyers, 323 yards, five touchdowns. Daniels for Southern Illinois gets player of the game for the defense. There's Smash Jackson running a man over, picks up seven or eight yards. Man, we are nearing 500 rushing yards in this game. Can't remember the last time we did that either. I know we have. Dorian, we're out here pitching it. Jackson still running people over, carrying defenders inside the 25. There's a flag for holding, though. Well, that's unfortunate. Head coach Robert Garnett Jr. is a little upset over there on the sideline. This is his first season as head coach of the Dayton Flyers. Off to a pretty good start, 8-1. and one. Looks like they're going to be 9-1 here. Or are they already 9-1? and one? I don't know anymore. I'm just here so I won't get fined. Oh my goodness, Jared Brody. Wow. 3rd <laughs> and 12. Give it off to Brody. That's all you got to do. Of course, stick around after the game. We're going to be taking a look at the Week 14 Top 25. We'll take a look at the Heisman watch list as well. As Dorian Wura pitches it out to Smash Jackson, who escapes all the way down the one-yard line. Ride him, Cowboy. Y'all want to taunt when you're down by 56 points? Well, how about being down by 63? What's up? Five trips to the red zone, five touchdowns. And Dorian Ward is in for another one. Don't ever taunt on me again. All right. 77 to 14 is the score. Five seconds left in the ball game. Onside kick recovery. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. I absolutely love it. Why not? <laughs> that's the end of the game. 77 to 14 is the final here in Dayton, Ohio. Flyers just absolutely dominate the Salukis. They are now 10 and 1 on the season. Saluki's season is over. Savage. 
Listen, if I if I get a chance for an onside kick, I'm gonna do it. This channel's great and you enjoy watching the FCS games. You live in Dayton, Ohio? Nice. Or in the area, very nice. You're inspired by the Flyers dynasty and decided to create your own Flyers team for your own dynasty? Nice. I like it. 541 rushing yards for Dayton today. My goodness. Total domination. Only one turnover. That was an interception thrown by Noah Johns. We had six penalties for 85 yards. Salukis, I mean, they didn't have any penalties, so they did good in that regard. We got the young 77 burger today, folks. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be taking a look at the nation after the game. Jared Brody. Wow. Dorian Wurr also had three touchdown runs. Smash Jackson had over 100 yards and a touchdown. Sunny Six, only one carry today. That's fine. Sunny Six will probably not be on the team next year anyway. Because the person that created the player is no longer in the Discord community. So it looks like it's just going to be the Jared Brody show. Getting all the carries next season. That just sounds dangerous. Alright brother, take it easy. Appreciate you stopping by. Defense played lights out. Dirt Davis, 9 tackles, 6 for loss, 1 sack. Shannon Ward had a couple sacks as well. 14 tackles for loss for the defense total. And three sacks. Two interceptions. Orlandi breaks the record with his 30th career INT from that middle linebacker spot. Bunch of deflections. Couple forced fumbles. Tank Taylor gloves Maloney. Chad one. Dirt Davis with a recovery. Now let's see. Extra points 11 of 11. 10 kickoffs, 0 touchbacks for the freshman punter, Andrew Logan. Got a 38.5 yard net average on punts. Omari Manuel had a 100 yard kick return touchdown today. Gloves Malone, I mean he had a 16 yard punt return, nothing crazy. Daniels, Meeks, and Jefferson play the game for the Salukis. Brody, Wura, and Dirt Davis, players of the game for the 10-1 and Dayton Flyers. We are advancing straight into Week 14. That was the actual final game for Week 13. So let's advance this week. And we'll take a look at our Week 14 schedule, which will be starting up um, on Monday night. Maybe Sunday night if I have the energy for it. And we'll also take a look at Top 25. We don't really need to take a look at the uh, conference standings too much because we know Southern Utah won the Pac-10, and that was the biggest thing that we had going for us for conference games after they beat UC Davis this week, 27-13. Well, we'll take a look at the Heisman watch list as well. Zoomer Speed was number one. I don't know how we're getting commits for any of these schools because there was a glitch at the beginning of the season and I wasn't able to recruit anybody. So it looks like the computer is recruiting players for us. And I'm going to go ahead and save this really quick too. As you can see, the glitched out colors on the Cal Poly logo. So I don't feel like having the game just completely die right here. So Cal Poly will be hosting Yale. That's their final regular season matchup. Um for this season. South Dakota State, they still have two games left. They will be traveling to Furman to take on the Paladins. And the VMI Cadets, number one team in the nation, will be hosting the 5-5 five and five Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles. And Dayton, their final regular season game, they'll be hosting the Elon Phoenix, who are 2-8 and eight on the season. So it should be another easy, breezy, beautiful victory right there. Bill Stevens is booing Yale in the chat. So hurtful. So hurtful. I had a really good Yale uh, dynasty back in the day. Obviously not on YouTube. I think I did like 30 seasons or something crazy. 
think I won six or seven national championships. It was a good dynasty. I really enjoyed it. Oh my goodness, this game takes so long to save. Come on, brother. Please save. Please save. Excuse me? Maximum settings saves have been reached? Okay. Whatever. I'll figure that out for the stream, I guess. All right. And then Northeastern Huskies at San Diego, who is now ranked 20th in the country. That's their final regular season matchup as well. Alabama State at Jacksonville, who has now jumped up to number two in the country. Dolphins have one more regular season matchup after that one. So we've only got six games for week 14, guys. Week 15, we've got five games. Wow. So this, this season is coming to a close pretty quickly, actually. All right. Who? Michael Hines has led the surprising Dolphins to a 9-1 and record in 2007. Full rankings, we don't care. Okay, San Jose State, nobody cares about that. Alright, so Jacksonville jumps up to number two, North Dakota State to three, Buffalo to four, Southern Utah up to number five, Dayton to six, Norfolk State to seven, Grambling State jumps up three spots to number eight, Savannah State up back in the top ten. Ridiculous, with three losses. You'd love to see it, unless you're Marvin. Let's see, Youngstown State, a couple of Big Ten schools here, Florida Atlantic, Central Michigan. UTEP falls 11 spots after losing to Stephen F. Austin 20-17. I believe that was at home as well. No, that was that was in the Lumberjack Stadium. Wow. South Dakota State to 14, Boise State to 15. UC Davis falls six spots after they lost to Southern Utah. Bryant jumps up four spots after beating ranked Southern 38-0. Cal Poly up four spots. San Jose State drops 12 spots after a loss to Idaho. San Diego up four after beating their rivals, Sacramento State, 42-21. Uh, Ball State drops four spots after losing to Central Michigan, or they drop seven spots, rather, after losing to Central Michigan, 24-22. Northern Colorado back up in the rankings for the first time in uh, a few weeks after beating Northern Arizona, 66-21. They have one regular season game left. That'll be in Week 15. Leathernecks up to 23rd, Fresno State to 24, and Prairie View A&M falls from 20th to 25th after getting trounced by Jacksonville 70 to 21. So that is the top 25, guys. Let's take a look. Tennessee State, Montana, William & Mary, Southern, Richmond, Hawaii, Indiana State, UNLV all receiving votes. Montana, Southern, and New Mexico all dropped out. New Mexico was ranked for one week, I believe. Eisman watch. Let's get it. The real deal. Harris Gurley, the true freshman halfback for Southern Utah, looks to garner All-America honors along with the coveted Heisman. And Michael Hines has leapfrogged Zoomer Speed for the number one spot on the Heisman watch list, folks. He had been number two for quite some time, but he's got 53 total touchdowns. He's over 2,500 passing yards. He is close to getting 1,500 rushing yards. He'll most likely get it. I mean, he's been an absolute stud, and that is why the Dolphins are 9-1 and one currently and sitting at the number two team in the country with a shot at the national championship. Zoomer Speed, I mean, he's having a fantastic season, but how do you compete with, with 53 total touchdowns from Hines? I don't know if he can. He's got 36 total touchdowns himself, almost 2,000 rushing yards, almost 700 receiving yards as well, and he's the return man. So if, if that's not enough for him to win it, then, I mean, just give it to Hines right now. Harris Gurley, 29 total touchdowns. I don't think he has a chance at winning it, but that's really good for the Thunderbirds to have a freshman halfback on the list anyways. Justin Hops, undefeated VM Mikey Detz. He's got 42 total touchdowns, almost 500 rushing yards, almost 2,500 yards passing. I mean, he's, he's been lights out all season, even going 5 of 13 against Sam Houston State. He still had 200 yards. And he had three total touchdowns in that game. So he's doing enough to keep his team undefeated and in prime position to get into the national championship game. 
Nicholas Hall is on the Heisman watch list after, uh, I mean, a decent game against UC Davis. Had over 200 total yards and a touchdown. But that game, they won the Pac-10 in that victory. And he's got over 2,000 yards passing, almost 1,000 yards rushing as well. So he'll get that in their bowl game most likely. And it'll probably be the Rose Bowl because I don't see um, the three teams in head of Southern Utah losing for them to be able to leapfrog everybody and get into that national championship game. Like even if North Dakota State beats VMI, you know, North Dakota State, they'll, they'll be in the top two. If Jacksonville loses, you know, North Dakota State's still going to be there. So I, I just, I'm pretty sure it's impossible for Southern Utah to get in there. They would need a miracle. All right. Let's see. Awards finalists. Oh, they actually went to finalists? Is it just top three now? Is that what we're doing? Yep. All right. So top three. For the Maxwell, Michael Hines, Zoomer Speed, Justin Haas. We just went over all three of them on the Heisman Watch list. The Bednarik, Logan Tyler, Cy Summers, and the one and only Rob Orlandi. 12 interceptions on the season. He's been a stud his whole career. So that's the top three for the Bednarik. I mean, Cy Summers, 15 sacks this season. That's the most he's ever had in a season. Almost double of his career high. I mean, I've just been destroying people with him this year. It's been great. Logan Tyler, of course, he's going to hit 100 tackles again. Um, don't pay attention to the 2005 stats because they don't count because that was a different player. So, But he'll hit 100 tackles once again. He has zero sacks on the season, but he does have 10 INTs, 7 forced fumbles, 2 recovered, 3 defensive touchdowns, and 14 deflections. He's been a monster. I'll be surprised if he doesn't win it, actually. Rob Orlandi is your hero, Bill. I like it. Best quarterback, Michael Hines, Justin Hops, and Jay McQueen from Hawaii. Okay, he might throw for 5,000 yards and probably 50 touchdowns. But yeah, I'm sure he doesn't have any rushing yards, right? Let's check that out. Nope, no touchdowns either. Just four fumbles. What a legend. The Doak Walker Award, Zoomer Speed, Harris Gurley, and Cam Sanders. 1,200 yards rushing and 23 touchdowns, but only two catches on the season. Best wide receiver. I don't think we'll have anybody on here. Oh, we do. Jaquan Freeman, number seven. He's got 11 touchdowns on 30 catches. Darren Van Baron, he leads all subscriber and Discord players with 1,278 yards receiving, 12 touchdowns. I'm surprised he is actually the lowest out of our our players from our 12 schools. That's That's kind of crazy. Best tight end, Casey Harrison from San Jose State, 13 touchdowns. Jake Berry is in second. He's got nine touchdowns. And Brahms North, who also has nine touchdowns on the season. I don't think Berry has enough catches to win that award. Brahms North might be able to sneak in there. I don't know. Best offensive lineman, Chad Filler, 120 pancakes and just two sacks allowed from that left tackle spot for the Jackrabbits. Anders Harliday, his best season of his career, 83 pancakes, two sacks allowed. I mean, he's been allowing quite a few sacks every season, but he's stepped it up this season. Look at those numbers. Much improved. And Ken Charles, random freshman from VMI. 65 pancakes, two sacks allowed. The Remington, Michael Chase, 50 pancakes for Rice. Greg North, 37 pancakes and one sack allowed. I believe that was his first of his career. No, it wasn't. Okay, he's got five. And Brooks Fletcher, another freshman. Offensive lineman for VMI. This is why they've been undefeated and just unstoppable this season. All right, Tyler, take it easy, buddy. You started out hot for Southern Utah, then not sure what happened. Maybe they quit throwing the ball your way. They might have, Bill. They just might have. The Lombardi Award, Ruben Blueberry is sitting up at the top. Okay, I see you. 10 sacks, 4 forced fumbles, 22 tackles for loss, 56 tackles altogether. Those are some pretty good stats. I like it. Trey Miller with 14 sacks. Oh, my goodness. We got anybody else on here? Tank Taylor was there. Nine sacks, four forced fumbles. He's got a lot of fumble recoveries in his career. Seven of them. He had six last season alone. The best linebacker award, Logan Tyler. This is the same as the uh, Bednarik award. So nothing changes there. The Jim Thorpe award. Just everybody except for three players. 
All right, Bully Cooper at the top, 86 tackles, 17 for loss, 7 sacks, 3 picks, 6 forced fumbles, and a touchdown, and a partridge in a pear tree. Ralph William, number 2, he's got 9 picks on the year. That's my oldest boy. And Cody Lee Jr., my youngest boy. He's got 7 interceptions, 4 forced fumbles, 5 touchdowns, 5 defensive touchdowns. Unreal. And Ralph William, he does not have any touchdowns this season. Darius Peters is on the list, seven picks. Dylan Tong is out for the season. He had seven picks. And we might have seen him in a Toreros jersey for the last time. He's a junior. He might declare for the EFL draft. It remains to be seen. Deacon Cooper, seven interceptions. Rufus Brewer, pretty decent stats for a strong safety. A couple sacks, four picks, two forced fumbles, and a touchdown. Jamie Foster. Non-subscriber player out here, getting on the list somehow. Parker Thomas, the true freshman. He's a free safety, but he's been starting all season long at strong safety for Savannah State. And he gets number nine on the Jim Thorpe Award. 49 tackles, two for loss, five, or five interceptions, one pick six, which was an 89-yarder. Wow. I did not expect to see him on here. Bill Stevens, he's on here. 46 tackles and three picks for the freshman. He also had three fumbles recovered and six pass deflections. There you go, Bill. See, you made an impact this season. The Luke Groza Award. Let's see. Dwight Turner, 15 of 16 field goals, 54 of 54 extra points for uh, South Dakota State. Ross Clark, perfect on the year. 9 of 9 field goals, 89 of 89 extra points. Wow. Vince White, he's missed two field goals. That's kind of crazy that he's number one. Or Landy, a linebacker or a safety at the next level? Um, I, I don't think he's got the speed to be a safety. He's most likely going to stay at linebacker for sure. Best punter, we don't have anybody on there. Best returner, it's got to be like everybody, right? Oh, my goodness. We've got seven players on there. Bryson Shields is currently number one. He's got two kick return touchdowns on the season and five punt return for score. So he's been fantastic. Seven total touchdowns for Gloves Malone, over 1,000 all-purpose yards for the junior corner. And Chris Numa, seven total touchdowns as well. Mr. Highlight, let's see, what did he do on returns? He was suspended for quite a few games this season, so you saw a drastic drop in his numbers. He had 28 touchdown catches last season, just eight this year. But that ground attack has been just deadly for Jacksonville. He does have a kick return touchdown this season, but only 15 tries on returns, a long of 103. Punt returns, he's got four of them. He had nine last season, which helped him win the Heisman Trophy. Oliver Vincent on here. Brandon Allen on here as well. Malik Higgins. Best coach. We don't have anybody. That's crazy. How's Colin Northrup not on there? 11-1 and one for the Bison? Come on, bro. Rondé Barber. I'm pretty sure he won it last season. 11-0. and 0. And no Rigier getting on there at the number 12 spot for Southern Utah. Really good season for him uh, in his second year for Southern Utah. They win the Pac-10. First time in program history. Congratulations to him. And he's looking at most likely a Rose Bowl berth to take on the Big Ten champion, unless the Big Ten champ goes into the title game. But uh, who knows? We might see Southern Utah taking on Dayton in the Rose Bowl. Is Gloves' real name Newton or Percy or something? Uh, Rob Orlandi actually created Gloves Malone way back in the day. Let's take a look at the bow projections just for uh, just for fun. Let's see what they got here. Las Vegas Bowl, Northern Colorado at Colorado State. I mean, that might be a good game. I'd, I'd watch that for sure. Cornell and Cal Poly. You know, we keep getting in these bowl games against the Ivy League schools, and it just doesn't end up too well. For, uh, for the Ivy League teams. I'm just saying. What else we got? San Diego and Western Carolina in the Holiday Bowl. That'd be a good matchup, I think. Western Carolina's got a dangerous offense. So the Toreros would have to ground and pound that one. The Sun Bowl, UC Davis and Montana. A little Rose Bowl rematch from last season in a different bowl game. I think that would be a good one. I would pay to see that. I think uh, head coach Jet Christie would love to get some revenge on the Grizzlies. Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Tennessee State, and Savannah State. Ooh, that would be a good one. That would be our second Tiger Bowl. We had one in Season 1 with Savannah State 
taking on, I believe, Princeton in the Gator Bowl, which we dubbed the Tiger Bowl, of course. The Cotton Bowl, Prairie View A&M, and South Dakota State. Uh, that might be a fun one as well. The Panthers, we saw them beat Cal Poly this season. I mean, they did just get absolutely destroyed by Jacksonville, but they did beat one of our schools. The Gator Bowl, the Penn Quakers, and Bryant Bulldogs. That would be a massacre. Rose Bowl, Southern Utah, and Dayton. That'd be a good one. Dayton is in the lead for the, the Big Ten currently. Wow. I could see that being a good one. Number six versus number five. The Orange Bowl, Buffalo versus Norfolk State. Spartans are the ACC leaders right now. I I think that Bryant has a shot. We'll take a look at the conference uh, championship uh, races in a minute. Yale and North Dakota State in the Fiesta Bowl. Come on, bro. Sugar Bowl, National Championship, Jacksonville versus VMI, of course. That's the projected title game. I think it'd be a really good game. All right, let's take a look at the conferences. Wait, what? That is definitely wrong. Dolphins suffer a collapse against SEC Phone Prairie and m I don't think so. All right, so the ACC. Okay, so Bryant is in the ACC championship game. So they could potentially get in there and beat Norfolk State. Okay, and I think that's really the only thing. Okay, so Dayton has won the Big Ten because they beat Youngstown State this season, if I'm not mistaken. We'll take a look at their schedule here in a moment. Well, the Big 12, we know that's North Dakota State versus VMI. Big East right now is uh, led by Yale. Conference USA. Richmond and UTEP will meet in that title game. Independence, nobody's going bowling here. My goodness, you guys are all bad. The MAC, Buffalo. It's going to take on, looks like, Central Michigan. Mountain West, two-way tie with UNLV and Colorado State currently. I think UNLV is going to win it right there because they're all out of conference games. Pac-10, Southern Utah won it. We already know that. SEC is going to be Grambling State taking on Jacksonville, of course. Sun Belt, FAU, and they have won that conference. Look at this. Oh, look at all these 500 teams. Come on now. You guys got to do better. The WAC, Boise State won that. All right, let's take a look at... What were we taking a look at? Who's, who's schedule? Oh, Dayton's. They did not face Youngstown State. But they have Dayton in the lead for the Big Ten. And they're all out of conference games. So, And Youngstown State's season is over. So it looks like Dayton has won the Big Ten, guys. Which is kind of crazy. What else was I going to look at? ACC, Big Ten... I think that was it. Yeah, these are our next games, guys. Yale, Cal Poly, South Dakota State at Furman, Tennessee Tech at VMI, Elon Phoenix at the Dayton Flyers in their final regular season matchup, Northeastern Huskies at the San Diego Toreros, and the Alabama State Hornets taking on the Jacksonville Dolphins in Jacksonville, Florida. And that rounds out week 14. And then week 15, we've only got five games left. So 11 total games left in the regular season, I believe. Nope, 12. We have one Week 16 game. I don't know why this is here, but it is. So we're just going to have to deal with it. I'm just going to play that one just directly after Week 15 is over. So, But that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this stream tonight. If you haven't already, please slap that like button on your way out of the stream. If you haven't joined our Discord community yet, I'm just going to keep saying it every single stream. So there's a link in the description below. Click it. Join our Discord community. We'd love to see you guys in there. And we'd love to see you get on the football field in Season 4 of our FCS Dynasty for one of our 12 schools. We'd love to call your name. And that is it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the Discord. Take it easy.